Welcome back. Let's continue with more news. The 15th BRICS Summit in South Africa should provide answers to the global issues facing the world. It's according to Professor Zhang Weiwei from the Chinese Institute at the Fudan University. He delivered a lecture at the University of South Africa in Pretoria. He also says that a number of countries are keen to join the bloc as the world experiences geopolitical shifts. Kylie Khe Kumalo has caught up with Professor Weiwei on the sidelines of the lecture. On the whole, the world today is... Uh marked by the relative decline of the West and the rapid rise of the rest. Of this rest, China is, of course, the most prominent one. And um, uh, given the size of China, both its uh, economic size uh, and its uh, political influence, uh, so China plays such an important role in the sense that uh, China is now the largest trading nation with uh, over 140 countries and with the BI initiative uh, uh, with the BI initiative uh, Belt and Road initiative what you see is it's uh, the joint working together with uh, over 150 countries mm -hmm. basically most of them are global south uh, uh, so uh, I hope you know with the uh, members of the BRICS and leaders of BRICS here in town in South Africa they will discuss uh, such as the importance of the enlargement of the membership of uh, BRICS and as well as how to deal with the problem of the dollar etc you know mm. Uh, and just once again, Prof, I mean, during mm. your lecture, mm. you, sp you spoke a lot about the rise of China. Mm. And I, I would imagine because, you know, the, the Western world, mm. uh, you know, there's a bit of a threat in mm. terms of the hegemony that is on the wane. Mm. So what would be the responsibility of China in terms of mm. resisting? You know, at times they talk about de-risking mm. and all kinds of things. Mm. How is be how's Beijing responding mm. to all, all of this? In fact, you know, the rise of China, is uh, strikingly different from the rise of the Western powers in the past. Virtually all major Western powers rose to their status as a, a powerful uh, country or countries, mainly through wars, through all kinds of you know, plunders, you know, uh, colonizations. China did not adopt that approach. China, China rise is peaceful. So this is already a remarkable achievement. As for sanctions against China, uh, so-called uh, de-risking or uh, decoupling, uh, indeed, you know, China is not afraid of that. You know, for, w for one thing, China is now the largest trading nation, trading partner with over 140 countries. China is simultaneously the largest uh, partner for the developing countries and for uh, the Western countries in terms of uh, trade, in terms of uh, resources, financial resources, in terms of technologies, etc. So this is uh, really a kind of situation which, as I said in my lecture, if the United States want, wants to isolate China, the United States will be isolated. And just before I let you go, uh, Prof, this BRICS summit comes at a, a critical time, you know, the geopolitical shifts and uh, far-reaching implications from Russia-Ukraine conflict. Mm -hmm. Do you think the summit will rise to the occasion mm -hmm. in terms of responding to these challenges? I hope that the Western powers will see the world has already changed. So this BRICS summit is a symbol of that the rise of the rest. You know, from this uh, Ukrainian crisis, you can see, uh, as I mentioned in my lecture, you know, the United States launched a currency war against Russia. And Russia turned this currency war into what I in Chinese call the war between goods and the money. Russia has goods, United States has money, but your money cannot buy our goods. So this sends a very important message. All these goods are in the global south, or most of the goods are in the global south. If you look at the trade surplus last year, number one, China, number two, Russia, despite sanctions, number three, Saudi Arabia. Most of these are developing countries. They have goods, they have natural resources, they have manufacturers, they have everything. 
maybe they have United States has a lot of services and uh, monetary uh, all kind of products, but in this time global crisis, in the time of crisis, you will see the value of tangible goods, resources. They are so important, and uh, so they have to respect global south and demand of the global south. Otherwise, uh, the global south will not buy their their, their aggressive approach to the global south.